What's going on everybody welcome back to another video um, i haven't posted in about three months so i just wanted to apologize for that um, i've been just dealing with a lot of personal issues and also i've been dealing with moving as you can see my computer is gone right now it's already packed up and i sold my 1080 ti that was inside of it so it's pretty much useless right now so i'm waiting for the 3080 which i'll put back to the desktop and have it my new setup in my new place but uh, today we're going to do a video on this laptop right here it has a, a 2070 super so it's going to be able to run microsoft flight simulator no problem that this should be max graphics i think i usually run it at and then yeah and of course we'll review the uh, the throttle cogent which i've been waiting for about five months now i ordered it um through honeycomb website when it was first uh released and announced and i finally got it in uh, i know right now they're going for a ton of money but you know eventually stock will catch up just like graphic cards and everything else um so of course right now another 600 700 dollars online but um, for the MSRP, for the $250, that's what we'll compare and we'll see if it's worth it that. So once again, so sorry for not posting videos lately. I do fly a lot with subscribers though and, uh, and talk to them on Discord, so just make sure you join that. I'll put that in the description below. And uh, I'm not going to go over the yoke today because I've gone over that before in a video, which I'll also post up here so you can check that out. But uh, but now we have the combo, so eventually we'll get the, the pedals whenever they come out, which will probably be another few months. But uh, but yeah, for now we have the, the yoke and the throttle quadrant. We'll pair them up and we'll see how, uh, how better of an experience we get with Microsoft Flight Simulator. I have some pretty nice packaging. All right, so right here, this box right here says commercial. This guy right here, nice and neat. That's really nice. And then the second box says general aviation. This one will have throttle, your mixture, and your, uh, your propeller. So that looks really, really nice. I won't take them out of the box just yet. Got a ton of foam in here. That's one whole piece of foam. Put that out of the way. And here's the water project. Oh, it's actually a lot lighter than I thought it was going to be. The yoke is really heavy, but this is actually not bad at all. The build quality actually on this one seems a little more plasticky compared to the yoke. I'll have to put them side by side and we'll see. We'll see, because from pictures, whenever I saw them, I figured that this was the exact same base as the yoke. So the other thing you get is your manual, uh, warning statement, little Aerosoft pamphlet, and uh, partner offers. Pretty cool, I'll explain it here. Neat. So you can see they're getting really involved with pretty much everybody in the flight sim industry. I don't even know if Honeycomb was a brand before or, or what happened, but they pretty much just came out of nowhere and came out with these awesome affordable products. So let's see what else. So here are the clamps, of course, just like the Honeycomb yoke, if you guys have that. It's pretty much the exact same thing. And then you have your USB-C. Pretty much it. And then of course the uh, the plate. Um, the system that they actually use to clamp this down is pretty weird. I think it's a really weird design. It's actually not very high tech at all, but it works extremely well. So props to whoever designed it. Um, I usually leave this on the plastic covering because it already is going to be sticky enough. Um, if you do that, that's going to be more of a permanent fix. And um, I'm not going to be using these desks in the future, so I'm just going to go ahead and leave that on. I know that I still have it on my um, my honeycomb yoke one, actually, I have it right here. So you can see I've had this for a couple years, or almost two years, and it still has the cover on it. So, just my recommendation. Uh, okay, so now, so that's pretty much the entire unboxing. We've looked at everything. I want to get a feel for these. Your reverse thrusters. Cool, so I guess it's all electronic in there. Just a whole nother button. Oh. Flaps notch. That's the only thing that, yeah, so this this right here, which we'll use for flaps, doesn't really have any detents. And I know tightening this right here also makes it so these slide around a lot easier. And then we tighten it, add some, some friction there. So 
we'll test all that out. These all have these really nice plastic covers on it, which we'll take off. This is really nice. Uh, the amount of buttons and everything, we'll go over that in the simulator, but looks like these switches are the same ones in the honeycomb yoke. Uh, this autopilot rubber buttons are really nice, actually. You have the detents here. You have your changes for your autopilot. Another knob of flaps here in case you're flying in a smaller airplane like a Cessna 172 and you don't necessarily need the entire flaps. And of course your gear up and down lever with light ups. So uh, I think there's gonna be a driver for this. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that first. Download the driver from Honeycomb or wherever I need to download it from. And that should make it to where everything um, is already configured inside of the simulator, but I'm not exactly sure. We'll see if that actually works. I doubt that I'll have to do individual setting up for this, except for maybe the uh, the throttles and stuff like that. But the buttons should already be set up just like they are in the, uh, the honeycomb yoke for the most part. So let's go ahead and clamp it onto the desk and see what they look like side to side. All right guys, so here we are in the flight simulator. I went ahead and downloaded the driver from Honeycomb. So just as I expected, the autopilot and the switches and everything were set up, the gear set up, flaps are set up. But uh, but these controls down here were obviously messed up and not configured the way I wanted just because you know there's so much variations. So what I'm gonna show you guys is how to set up different control schemes for different aircraft, which you can save. That way you can just switch to them back and forth uh, whenever you want to fly those airplanes. So right now I have the 787 setup. So let me show you. Let me go into the control setups. Um, this setup would also work for, for you know, uh, Lear jets, twin engine jets, pretty much. Uh, maybe not so much the A320 just because of the speed brake and stuff like that. But all stuff that you can uh, adjust pretty pretty easily. So here we are in the controls. Bravo throttle quadrant. As you can see, I saved it as Bravo throttle 787. So what I pretty much did initially is I cleared all here. I cleared them all because they were already assigned. So I cleared them all from their assignments and I went ahead uh, one by one and assigned it. So I have my throttle one and two. I have my reverse thrusters, uh, my flaps and my speed brake. So uh, the other thing I was gonna cover is these switches right here, if you already own the honeycomb yoke, these are, are actually already set up the same as these. So. These are your master alter alternator and stuff like that in avionics, and that's what these are as well. So if you do own the Honeycomb Flight Yoke, uh, I recommend that you go ahead and clear all these buttons right here and just uh, adjust them to your liking. Uh, I think I'm going to be doing some anti-ice and buttons and stuff like that, maybe maybe a parking button and stuff like that. But I haven't figured that out quite yet. But, uh, but yeah, uh, the autopilot is everything is set up perfectly. We'll get into one of the airplanes and I'll show you how that works. And then the trim and the gear and then this flaps button is also perfectly set up. So you won't have to change anything after you go ahead and download that driver. So let me show you um, how you would actually save a control scheme. We'll make one for the 747 just so I can uh, show you an example. So 787, we're not going to want that. You, sometimes you can copy what I did to make my 787 default or um, my 787 control scheme is I had this, this is the default that it comes with. And since you want to keep the autopilot and um, some of these buttons and not have to start from scratch, what I did is I copied it. So you would go to preset manager and then you would just duplicate it. And then I just duplicated it and saved it as a new name, 787, which became this, which then after I went ahead, cleared all these and then set the controls the way I wanted. So I'm about to go show you what that would be like. Uh, we'll just copy this one since we're going to want to keep the flaps and the speed brake. We're just going to add some engines. So I will go to the preset manager. I will duplicate this. And then we're going to rename it Bravo Throttle 747. Okay. So now let's go ahead and get it set up. Uh, the cool thing about this right here is if you're flying a uh, uh, two engine aircraft, you can flip this to three and two. So normally, obviously, that would be your engine number three because we're going to move this one over but you just move that over and it becomes your engine number two. So since we're gonna have a 747, 
we'll leave it right there. We'll take this off. I'm gonna go ahead and try to keep the covers on whenever I'm not using them, just to try to keep gunk and stuff out, especially with uh, with the dogs that I have and their hair that they shed. I don't wanna get stuff in, in here that's gonna be hard to clean and also probably affect the mechanism and how smooth it is. So, got engine one. Let's get engine number two. And take this off and engine number four. Oops. So there you go. So obviously since we switched those up, we're gonna have to redo the throttles. So what we'll do here is we'll search by input. I'll slide this over. As you can see, it is not assigned. So we'll go throttle. Whenever I first got the simulator, it was a little hard to maneuver these settings, but um, but I'm getting the hang of it. If you use the, the input and the search settings by name, it actually will help you a lot. So here's our throttle one, which we're gonna wanna change to here. So that's good. We'll validate that. Then we'll go down to throttle two, clear that, and then we'll do two. There we go. And then we'll go down to three, since it's gonna be a 747. There we go. And throttle four, which will be right here. Perfect. So that pretty much means we have all of our throttle set up. Uh, just to make sure that my flaps and speed breaker are set up correctly, let me test them. So there it is, spoilers, that's correct. And then let me test my flaps and my flaps are set. So that's pretty much all you're gonna to have to change between aircraft because you're really never gonna change these autopilot buttons. Uh, you may wanna switch these between um, airplanes, so that's just gonna also be in here inside of your control scheme. That way you don't have to uh, set up control settings every time you fly. Uh, gear and trim, I'll leave alone. And then let me think if there's anything else. Oh, the reverse thrusters. So the reverse thrusters are a little tricky so far. I'm able to activate them like this, but they don't trigger until I go throttle up. So if any of you guys have uh, any recommendations or if you guys have gotten it to work to the rear, the reverse thrusters just instantly work whenever you do, uh, you pull them back, let me know. But because I'm having to do an extra step, I'm having to do that and then I have to actually uh, put the, uh, the throttles all the way forward, which is, uh, you know, not ideal. I don't think that's how it works in real life. So let me show you guys how to set the reverse thrusters. So we'll search by name, we'll do reverse. As you can see, it's set up to button 10 and 26. So 10 was actually uh, not in use. So let's go ahead and clear that. And we'll do hold, so we'll do this one. Validate, and then I guess it only lets you assign two, so you realistically wouldn't be able to set all four of them to that, but I guess you could set two just to make sure you trigger them. I'll do uh, the third one. So technically you'll only need to pull these two, but I'm gonna pull all of them just to uh, add that realism effect. I'm actually not liking how this one keeps going down. My palm isn't big enough to hold all four together and my fingers aren't long enough, but Let's, um, let's actually get into the 747 and just test everything out and that'll be a good, a good demonstration of everything and we'll, uh, we'll try to test the autopilot as well. Since it is a 747 and it's probably going to be pretty demanding on this laptop, let me go to an airport that's not around a ton of scenery. Uh, we'll go to Princess Juliana, Tango November, Charlie, Mike, and then we'll departure from here. Switch to the 747 over here. And let's go ahead and switch out the livery for that. I have not flown the 747 that livery. Honestly, I haven't flown the 747 probably since like the simulator came out and I first flew. All right, so here we are on the runway. Just check out our speed brakes are working good. Let me zoom in right here just so you guys can kind of see everything. Oh, we got some reverse engines there. So let's go back into our controls. Looks like three and four need to be reversed. So we'll go into input, reverse, and we'll go into here and reverse. So there is still a little bit of uh, glitches and stuff like that, little one-offs, but uh, pretty much everything can be corrected. So there we go. So let me show you what I mean by the reverse thrusters. So I'll pull them forward. 
but as you can see, nothing happens until I actually do this. So it triggers it, but then I have to go ahead and do that. And I've tried quite a different uh, combination of controls to try to get this to work and I haven't been able to, so. So please comment down below if you guys have figured it out and got the, got the reverse thrusters to just pretty much pull back right there because that's not working. All right, so we got our throttles working, reverse we tested, speed brake. It's got quite a bit of a delay. Actually, maybe it just lagged a little bit. We were in a 747 and it's not currently showing my FPS right now, but I'm assuming it's not great. Um, and then our flaps, as you can see right there. Again, sorry for how blurry in the graphics, how terrible they are right now. As soon as I get into my new setup and uh, bring out my desktop, I'll, I'll be able to do shoot uh, 2K and 4K again. So the resolution will be a little better because I know the trees and everything. Look at the distance. Everything just looks pretty bad. And this uh, this laptop can actually run 1440, uh, just not in 747s. But if we were in like a Cessna or a TBM or something, it can, it can run 1440 and have pretty decent flyable FPS. But... Um, but yeah, let's go ahead and take off, and then I'll show you guys the autopilot in flight. Let's go ahead. Parking brake is still set. I haven't set that to anything yet, so we'll hit space. Bring our view down a little bit, and then should be ready to go. I'm going to give it one notch, one notch of flaps, just because this is a pretty short runway. But I know 747 is landing in real life, so we should be okay. pretty smooth so in the 747 and pretty much almost max graphics Ooh, it's starting to pull up a little early so let's do a little nose down trim and then right about there we'll start pulling up yeah it actually got there pretty quick never mind Ooh, let's clear out of the way for that guy positive rate gear up really like that gear lever very satisfying for the price I mean if you told me 10 years ago that something like this would cost $250, I would have laughed. I mean, stuff like this has usually cost well over $500, well into the thousands of dollars. So for somebody to come out here and make this for $250, it's, it's fantastic. All right, so airplane's flying great. Uh, throttles and everything are working good. Uh, we got a good climb rate right there. So let's just go ahead and zoom into the autopilot. And uh, let's test that out. Let me get this actually down so it doesn't get in the way of the camera. So as you can see, it does leave some uh, some fingerprints and stuff right here, but it is pretty easy to clean, so can't complain too much there. Um, so let's go ahead and test out the autopilot. Let me just show you guys um, right there what that looks like. And you can see the little notch right here, so you can uh, switch between those. They have detents and everything. So. That's how you'll adjust um, your altitude, vertical speed, heading, and uh, airspeed and stuff like that. All right, let's mess with the uh, with the autopilot. So altitude, as you can see, we're switching it right there. So we are at uh, really low. We're just barely passing 2,000 feet. So let's just go up to 5,000. Uh, and then for our vertical speed, uh, we'll probably have to turn that on whenever we actually turn the autopilot on. So let's do our airspeed. You can see right there, let's do 250, and our heading as well, which as you can see right there, the heading bug moving and everything, we'll do uh, like over here, past 300, and then let's just turn on our autopilot, I don't know if I'm doing this right, it's my first time doing it, but autopilot on, okay, airplane's doing something, uh, it looks like we're going up, is our airspeed being adjusted? Let me, since we're already past 250 knots, let me change my airspeed up and see if we see the throttles actually starting to increase. Okay, so I don't see them moving, but it's working. Okay, so that's super weird. As you can see, uh, the airspeed is definitely changing to the way we want it. Just increase it to 300, and yep, we're speeding up, but the, uh, the actual throttle coil is not moving, but uh, the autopilot's working, so that's fine. That's probably just a flight simulator glitch. And then let's go ahead and try to see if we can get our heading to work. So we'll hit this heading button. We'll see our heading indicator is on. Now let's go to the right. 
and there you go. Our airplane is flying over. We were supposed to level off at 5,000 feet. As you can see, uh, the airplane passed it by about 200 feet, but it's uh, trying to compensate and head right back down. So as you can see, the autopilot's not smooth, but that is not the throttle quadrant's fault. Uh, but yeah, there you go. Our heading actually worked perfectly there. Airspeed is also maintaining around 300, which is what we had set. And then let me change the altitude up to 6,000. And then we'll do our vertical speed test, which I'm not seeing on the vertical speed indicator on the autopilot, but if you can see the, uh, the bug on the right side of your um, altimeter, I can see it right there moving past 1,000, that little pink line, and 1,500 right there, you can see it. So it's working. Yep, autopilot's working fine. All the settings are set. If we had a route chosen out before, if we already had it into the uh, into the system, we could have just hit nav, and it'll follow that route for you. But obviously, we didn't have that option right now. So yeah, everything's working pretty fantastic. Uh, let's do, let's see. So we tested the autopilot. That's working good. Um, the throttles were a little weird, so let's go into the uh, the 787 and fly that around. Maybe do a, do a landing at the same airport. So of course, first thing we want to do, switch this back to the, uh, I guess we can leave that there, back to the 787. So how easy these pop off makes it really convenient. I mean, it'll take you the loading screen to switch between uh, airplane setups, so definitely no complaints there. We got that there. Um, I guess the only tedious thing would be putting the, uh, the rubber back on, but that's not a big deal at all. Everything comes on really easily. I'm really impressed. Highly, highly recommend this. I don't recommend you paying well over MSRP like everything is online right now, but whenever uh, stock catches up, you can get this for the, the 250 USD that it's worth. Um, yeah, highly get it. Only thing I would say is if you can only get one of these, I would get the yoke just because the yoke is amazing um, and then get some pedals. But, um, and then this, you can obviously cheap out and get the, uh, the Logitech SciTech throttle quadrant, which is like $60, $70, which I've used before. And that does the job. But, um, but yeah, that's only if you can only pick one. If you can only pick one, I would say actually get the yoke. Uh, if you can get both, then by all means, get both because it's 100% worth it. So let's try landing here. We'll switch to 787. Uh, we're not in the 787 control, so you will have to go back to the settings. Okay, so you'll go into the controls, and then it'll be set to 747, because that's what we were just flying. And then we can just go ahead and switch through. See, I made one for the Cessna, and then here's our 787. So let's get a landing here, and uh, see how we do with this new throttle. So we'll do set as arrival. Oops. So we clear that. So if you ever want to do just a, a quick landing and it starts you on final, you didn't know how to do that, you just click the runway you want to land on and you click set as arrival with nothing else and it'll automatically set you up a couple miles. Well, actually a few miles, 11, 11 nautical miles. Uh, I think maybe closer depending on the airplane because I think the Cessna wouldn't put you 11 miles out, but I could be wrong. But this is a, a quick way to just practice your landings. Especially since the landing challenges doesn't have anything with the 787, unfortunately. I feel like they definitely need to add some, some safe 787 landing challenges. So let's make sure everything's good. Throttle is good. Uh, flaps are good. I don't know why they were down all the way. Gear is still up. And our speed brakes are working. So let's go ahead, pick up some speed, lower some altitude. Gear down, notch your flaps. bad for a laptop though. Right, as you can see we're dropping a ton of speed. Another notch of flaps. Actually let's just go full flaps now because we are very high. But yeah I gotta say this this dual throttle and everything just the way it feels feels amazing. Flaps are full, gear is down. We're actually coming up really high. Let me put the nose down. Don't really like a lot of that pixelation in the water. 
Um, I do get it less whenever I switch resolutions, but still not not really pleasurable to watch. Okay, so we got one red right there. Man, this airplane likes to fly slow. There we go. Speed brakes. And reverse thrusters. There you go. Super slow landing in 787. I am really liking this. This is definitely going to be. Oh, turn radius was off there. But uh, but yeah, I'm definitely going to be making another update video. This was more of just like a little first glance setup view. Um, I'll definitely do like a one or two week use. Uh, like I said, I am moving, so it's probably going to be another week or two before I can make another video for you guys. Um, but once I'm set up in my new place and my new little studio, I will definitely be making a lot of videos for you guys. But uh, but yeah, everything's working fantastic. I absolutely love it. And then other than that, I'm trying to think if there's any features I'm forgetting about. Um, of course, you do have this knob here, which you can tighten up, and it'll actually make this little little stiffer to move up and down. If you have a 747 and you're having to move four of these, you probably aren't going to want it in the tightest setting um, or the loosest setting, though. I, I kind of found that right in the middle um, is kind of perfect for, for all the airplanes. It lets you make those small adjustments easily. You're not fighting it, and then it's also not too too smooth where you're just sliding around so uh, right in the middle is where I'm going to leave that knob um, of course you can switch this to two and three so that's what you would have done but when are you really ever going to be looking at that go ahead and join our discord so we can all fly together and talk flight simulator I'll put that in the description below um, once again so sorry for not posting videos recently I promise I'm not going anywhere uh, I've just been really busy and just dealing with a lot of stuff that has kept me from posting as many videos as I want. So thank you guys so much for watching, and I promise I'll post another video soon. And, uh, and yeah, join the Discord so we can talk on there. Peace.